G'day folks, uh, welcome to a Monday update. Um, just going through my emails and things and catching up on stuff. Uh, I had a lot of response to, well not to, but from people with much smaller channels than mine, or very small channels, uh, getting random videos flagged by people or maybe even bots. I don't know for sure if there's a bot program or something that's doing it. It does seem to be a pretty strong topic, but likewise it's pretty hard to tell but yeah I've had at least eight people private message me about different videos of theirs getting flagged for pretty much no apparent reason like they might be about amateur pyrotechnics or something usually in a country where it's completely legal to do that sort of thing um, one of them was a friend's video of his cat chasing a cursor around a screen apparently that got flagged it isn't now but apparently that got flagged for animal cruelty like it's tormenting the cat or something. So it does seem to be not so much based on how big you are on YouTube, but more, it's just random vandalism essentially. Like these are just van video vandals, vandals as far as I'm concerned now. Knowing what I know after the last 24 hours, um, yeah, I'd say it's sort of like a street gang running around vandalizing cars and shop windows. It's somewhat coordinated like there's a they might be a group but they're just attacking at random they might pick out some hot targets like my channel sort of the equivalent of a used car yard that they can just break windows and slash tires in because i do all sorts of things which could be attacked uh, unfortunately a lot of them aren't but just the occasional one gets hit hard so it's really hard to pinpoint an exact pattern but i'm working on it and it's getting closer to a uh not, so, not a solution to this, but some kind of idea of how it works and how to combat it. So yeah, there are things in the works, I can't disclose too much, but yeah, I won't say any more than that. And yes, I do need to spruce up my front page, it's pretty dull and it has been ever since they converted over. I don't think I've touched anything on this page apart from the featured video, which I'd recommend you check out. I'll leave it on there for a bit longer. It's a nice little stop-go animation of a uh, engine tear down by a British guy. Um, it looks like a Triumph Spitfire motor, uh, BMC motor, sort of like the Morris. Well worth checking out. And yes, I do need to make a, a graphic background and everything for this channel. It's still got my original background picture, which you can barely see now. So, yeah. As you can see, I haven't been bothered doing much in the way of fancy editing or setting up the back of the, the main channel. Uh, I should do that soon and hopefully uh, start improving the view count and everything. I think that's going to be key to total or totally overcoming this flagging issue is basically get up to the same point that a lot of YouTubers, megatubers have where they're essentially flag immune. It'll take a bit of work but it is possible. So let's look at some more stuff. I've got a Nintendo and a LCD monitor that needs some attention. Okay, so... We've got one very dirty, muddy monitor that's currently plugged into some power. And we've got a Nintendo, which I actually just washed a lot of uh, the mud off the outside of, but is relatively intact. Uh, this is an original. I thought it might have been a Super Nintendo, but they have a different casing and everything. This is an original uh, Mattel version. So I've got to open this up and dry it out as quickly as possible. I gave it a good hose down and got all the mud and crap off it because it looked like that. Uh, but I don't know how well it's going to come up. But this sort of electronics is pretty robust. Unfortunately, that stuff's not. And the panel's saturated and has a nice big crack going diagonally through it. So let's do the logical thing and power it up. No sparks. We've got a green light. Probably wants a data cable to at least expect the backlight to come on, assuming it's not smashed. Uh, what button is what? I think the backlight tube is broken. Yeah, I can just hear a faint, a faint hiss from a H or a ballast, or not a ballast, a um. CFL driver in the back there, so I think whatever smashed the panel smashed the backlight as well. So that's not doing anything. That or it's just dead. Maybe that was the original problem, I don't know. 
I'm guessing they wouldn't have thrown it out without a decent reason because it's a decent sized panel but I'd say maybe the electronics in the power supply have died and the inverter's not getting any power. Either way I'll show you how to pillage one for parts and what can be salvaged. Okay well I figured first priority should be the Nintendo since it's a corrosion issue. Um, the LCD is not going to go anywhere fast, it's not going to work again, at least not by the time I'm done with it. But yeah I just figured I'd pull the board out and give it a good wash. It doesn't look like anything that's not hot soapy waterproof. Inside of the tuna cans are all solid state stuff anyway, there's no moving parts. Micro switches can be washed out later with uh, parts cleaner, contact cleaner. And likewise I wash all these shields in the plastic case. Yeah, I don't see why you couldn't even put it in the dishwasher. There's really uh, not much to it. There's a little uh, potentiometer there that might get a bit upset, but that area doesn't even need to be washed, so... Yeah, not bad. There might be a couple of little trimmers or something inside the uh, can, which also seems to double as a power supply. Well, power input. It's 9 volt, 1.3 amp, according to the back panel. Yeah, not bad. I'll give this a wash up and get it dried out as quick as possible and it should fire up once I get some uh, power to it and a couple of controllers. Uh, if anyone at home has a set of spare, a pair of spare Nintendo original controllers, uh, no console that they have, uh, let me know. I might, for a decent price, I might be uh, interested in buying them, assuming this thing decides to boot up and do what I want it to. Well, not that there's anything to boot up, it's a very basic ROM based gaming console, there's no real operating system on it. Uh, Sanyo IC, interesting. Two Sanyo ICs, Toshiba, Philips, that one's Nintendo copyright at 85, just a little bit older than I am. Yeah, NES CPU 11, very interesting. Looks like there's an expansion port on the bottom of it too, it's probably made to fit into a docking station of some description expansion station. Oh, that board should separate too. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so while the Nintendo's drying out, and I did already wash it out with a bit of hot water and blow dry and heat gun it and a bit, bit of this and that, but it's just going to do a, a thorough final dry under the heat pump overnight. So that can sit and wait for another video, but I figure we'll have a look at this display panel uh, it's mostly just rubbish anyway. Already got the base off. The base actually attaches to the um, wall bracket points, so it might be handy to hang on to for uh, random stray panels that I find without connect without uh, bases on them. So as you can see, pretty straightforward. You got power supply and image processing built in. Unfortunately, it uses a different kind of interface to the panel as the uh, other Chime or I think it is. Yeah, it's a Chime op. Optronics panel in the uh, TAC television. Maybe I might be able to use the board in this, but I doubt it. I'd say it's a integrated little panel drive and everything. This is just you know, connected to the uh, panel itself, the ribbons with the chip on film chips in there. That's what those little rectangular things are. They're actually a chip. And these wires here are your high voltage for the uh, backlights, the cold fluorescent, cold cathode fluorescent lamps. Since this panel's trashed, I'm not really too concerned about it. So I'll unplug the back lights. They're actually going to dismantle the panel itself for the main item that I want. The rest of it's mostly just rubbish. There's a couple of micro speakers there, which are... Well, that one's got water and mud all over it. That one doesn't. But I want to see what the board's like. I'll probably keep the board and the power supply, even if they are fried but I'm mainly interested in the panel itself and you'll see why when I get into it. Hmm, yet another disappointment. Uh, blown cap, blown, blown and blown. I bet you the rest of them aren't far off either. And they all feed the backlight inverter. So, well, this would have been an easy fix and a good panel if it wasn't physically smashed. Like it's got a big crack right across it, so it's of no practical use anymore, which is unfortunate. Uh, the damage occurred to it at the scrapyard too. I can see where something's landed on top of it and broken it. Otherwise I would have been able to save this one, but... Ah, well, life's always full of disappointments. Doesn't matter. 
I've got tons of LCDs, but it's just a bit of a shame because this is a nice widescreen panel. Interesting that the power supply is made by Delta. Uh, probably, I don't know if this would be China or Taiwan. I know Chai Mei, I think it's Taiwanese. Uh, I used to use Chai Mei plastics when I did my plastic injection moulding apprenticeship. Yeah, made in Taiwan. You know, I used to mould uh, Chai Mei brand ABS, acrylonitrile butadiene styrene, which is exactly what that's made out of. Probably the same sort of stuff. If it's made by Chai Mei, it'd be the same Chai Mei plastic with a bit of black master batch in it. ABS on the back of the panel with the recycling logo means acrylonitrile butadiene styrene and the PC either if it's just PC alone or P ABS dash PC uh, PC stands for polycarbonate and you can get blends of the two which is an ABS polycarb mix or you can mould stuff out of straight polycarb which often is sometimes used in clear form for uh, high impact windscreens and windows and things like that it's more resistant to damage than uh, acrylic which I think you normally call lexin or um, sorry no lexin is polycarbonate now, what's the other name for acrylic? You see this board's probably still okay. Can't remember the other name for acrylic. Yeah, see the board, this little driver board would be okay, but the thing is I can't just connect it to that other panel because it's got different ribbons and things. So I'll keep you. The power supply is pretty much useless, that's all blown. Yeah. Not so important. I want what's in the panel. <laughs> okay, let's go. First person panel tear down. I don't recommend doing this to the ones you want to keep. So just straight up scrapping it. You can see that dirty big crack through it. Yep, right in the corner where it got hit. Such a shame. <laughs> well, what I want is a bit of fuser material. This stuff comes in handy for things. Not a bad thing to have around. But, that's what I want. That's a big slab of acrylic. Maybe polycarbonate, I can't remember. Pretty sure they're all acrylic. Feels like it anyway. There it is. Oh, I see, it's still half snapped into the housing. Not easy one-handed, but you can do it. Yeah, it's all the integrated backlights and everything. No, it's going to take two hands. Oh, well, you see what I'm after, though. Nice solid lump of acrylic. Yeah, if you see that, hold the panel up to the light, you can see the liquid crystal move around as you flex it. It's like it's bleeding literally is bleeding internally well actually it's air getting between the gaps <laughs> interesting effect I'll give him that much anyway I guess I better get the rest of this out. It's heavy. This is most of the weight is the backing panel and the, um, the steel. The rest of the monitor weighs bugger all. Okay, I finally got it to bits. And uh, yeah, the edge lights aren't broken. It was only the corner of the panel that copped the hit and broke. The edge lights just weren't getting power because the power supply's blown. Those caps are all bulging like mad. 
especially that one there. Oh well, in theory if I could fix this inverter I'd be able to use these edge lights for something but I've got no practical use for it so it's really just rubbish after that. Oh well, this is what I was after though. It's a nice bit of 10mm thick polycarbonate panel with an interesting pattern on the back of it, obviously for diffusion and the white plastic sheet on the back of it. But that's what you can harvest from a uh, dead LCD monitor. It's probably one of the heaviest bits of it. Uh, some of them don't use this, they just have a thin flexible panel and rows and rows of backlights inside them, particularly the bigger ones. Uh, they're a lot lighter but still uh, probably more fragile because there's no rigid backing for them. So yeah, there you go. That's all for a Monday night, which I don't normally do so much on. Uh, thanks for watching.